What's up world, Matt here. And today we're gonna be practicing the skill of giving descriptions. I think descriptions are an incredibly important part of speaking a language. When we give descriptions, that's how we share our opinion, we show our emotions, and we also share a little bit of our personality. I think when we talk about objects and actions, those are often very functional and objective parts of the language, right? The teacher is in the office. But when I add descriptions to that sentence, I can start to show some emotion and personality and opinion, right? The handsome young teacher is in his hip, cool, technological office. I can transform a sentence from something that's very plain into something that's very personal, all through using describing words. And those are the words that we're gonna be exploring today. So before we go any further, I want you to practice what you can already do to describe something. I'm gonna show you two pictures right here, and I want you to describe what you see. Anything that you see and you can describe, say it out loud. This will be a great warm up for the rest of our lesson. I'm gonna show a picture, you can pause the video, and when you're ready for another picture and more practice, then hit play. Nice, that was some great descriptions of that image. Now I'm gonna show you a similar image, but a slightly different day. How can you describe this picture? Pause the video, share what you can, and then hit play and we can keep moving with our lesson. Nice, great work describing both of those pictures. Now I'm gonna show you some more pictures and I'm gonna describe for you a wonderful Saturday that I had last weekend. I want you to pay attention to the way that I describe different parts of my day. Listen to how the words that I'm choosing and the voice that I'm using communicate my opinion, my emotions, and also share with you some of my personality. So last Saturday, I had a wonderful day. It was incredibly beautiful weather, bright blue and sunny. In the morning, I ate a delicious breakfast. I had coffee, toast, butter, it was so good. Coffee was hot and fresh. And then in the afternoon, I had an exciting day. I went on a hike and I hiked up a mountain. It was an exciting day. So those are some words that I can use to describe my wonderful Saturday. It was a wonderful Saturday with beautiful weather, a delicious breakfast, and an overall exciting day. But I also have to tell you, I had a terrible day on Sunday. Let me tell you about it. Sunday was a terrible day. We had ugly weather here in San Antonio. It was gray and rainy, but it didn't rain. It was ugly weather. In the morning, I ate a disgusting breakfast. I need to go to the supermarket. I don't have good food. I had gross papaya and burned toast and a dry egg. It was a disgusting breakfast. And then I had a boring day. Don't get me wrong, laying on the couch, scrolling through my phone can be wonderful, but last Sunday it was so boring. Every social media site I went on, nothing. YouTube, nothing. Reddit, nothing. Everywhere I went, nothing, nothing, nothing. It was a boring day. So that was my Sunday. A terrible day with ugly weather, a disgusting breakfast, and an overall boring day. So those are some of the words I want us to be practicing today as we start trying to describe our own experiences having wonderful and terrible days and days anywhere in between. Now, before we go any further, I want to stop for a quick grammar break. This is an important point that I think is going to help you sound like an expert who really knows how to speak English and avoid making a common mistake that can make you sound like someone who's still learning some of the basics. 
So I want you to listen to me giving these descriptions about a day. And I want you to pay attention to which order the words are in. Wonderful day. Beautiful weather. Delicious breakfast. Exciting day. So what do you notice about the words that are describing? Yeah, the words that are describing, these describing adjectives, they come first. Wonderful, and then day. Beautiful, and then weather. This is an important point to notice. And it's most important because it's the opposite of Portuguese. In Portuguese, this is what the internet tells me. So if I'm wrong here, go, oh, come on, boo, boo, boo. But I look this up and I speak a little bit of Portuguese, but no me falo bem português. So what I know is that traditionally in Portuguese, you will say an object and then the description. And in English, it's the other way around. I want you to pay attention to this and start trying to practice. Now, when you're learning a language and something is done the opposite of the way you're used to in your first language, that kind of learning takes a long time and a lot of practice. So my tip for you is don't give up, okay? It might take you some extra time because your brain has this habit of putting the description word second but I promise you, if you put in the time to practice, you can train your English voice to say those description words first. So even if you're talking about a terrible day with ugly weather and disgusting breakfast and a boring day, you can use beautiful grammar and the correct order. All right. Now that I've shared with you that information about the order the words go in and told you, you should practice, well, I think we should practice. So I'm gonna show you a sentence, and this sentence is going to have all of the correct words to express a nice, clear description. But this sentence is going to be in the wrong order. I want you to look at the words you see on the screen, and I want you to try and put them in the correct order. Pause the video, maybe take out a sheet of scratch paper if writing helps you, or just talk out loud if you find that easier, and try to rearrange these words into a correctly ordered sentence. When you're ready to check if your answer matches my answer, then hit play, and I'll rearrange the words and show you the order that I would put them in. Ready? Okay, here's our first example. Day was a beautiful it. Put that in the correct order now. All right, ready for the answer? So the order that I would say this is, it was a beautiful day. Is that what you put? Nice. All right, let's try example number two. Day, it, a, uh, was, wonderful. Can you put these words in the correct order? Ready to hear my answer? What I would say is, it was a wonderful day. Is that what you put? Nice. All right, let's try example number three. Terrible, a, uh, it was day. Can you put those words in the correct order? All right, ready to hear what I've got? It was a terrible day. Is that what you put? Nice, you're getting good at this. All right, ready for example four? Uh, ate, I, breakfast, delicious. Can you put those words in the correct order? Ready to see what I've got? I wrote, I ate a delicious breakfast. Is that what you put? Prove it. All right, nice job. Okay, ready for example number five? I, breakfast, N, ate, disgusting. Can you put those words in the correct order? Ready to hear what I've got? Yeah, 
I ate a disgusting breakfast. <laughs> All right, ready for example number six? Had, exciting, a uh, day, I. Can you put those words in the correct order? Ready to see what I got? I had an exciting day. Is that what you put? Nice. <laughs> All right, last up, example number seven. Had, boring, day, a, uh, I. Can you put those words in the correct order? Ready to see what I got? I had a boring day. Hmm. Is that what you put? Well, great work putting those sentences in order. Now that we've practiced using our description words in complete sentences, I want us to practice using them in even longer chunks of speaking. Let's come back to one of the two questions we started with. How was your weekend? I'm going to answer that question using our new description words. One thing I'm thinking about is some of these description words are really positive and some of these words are really negative. So as I tell you about my weekend, I'm going to tell you about a really positive Saturday and a really negative Sunday. Now, I'm going to make up some of the details because I want to practice talking about both a positive and a negative description. If I only talk about a positive description, I'm not going to practice the other words. So that's my tip for you. After you listen to me talk about a positive Saturday and a negative Sunday, then pause the video and try to answer the question yourself speaking both about a positive experience and potentially a negative one, even if you need to make up some of the details. All right, so I'm going to imagine that we're sitting there talking and you ask me, hey Matt, how was your weekend? And I can respond, well, I had a wonderful Saturday. I went to the park with my friends and there was beautiful weather all day long. Uh, we got to go on a really exciting bike ride with our friend's dog, and it was a really wonderful day. And to finish it off, I had a delicious dinner at one of my favorite new restaurants. I had an amazing steak and veggies, a nice salad. It was a really delicious dinner. So I had a wonderful Saturday. But let me tell you, my Sunday was terrible. My friends and I had such a great time at the park on Saturday that we went on a hike on Sunday. But when we got to the trail, there was ugly weather. There was terrible wind and thunder and lightning in the distance. We decided instead to go to a nearby restaurant, but it was disgusting. They served us a disgusting breakfast that was cold and there were bugs in the restaurant. It was not a delicious experience. And so I just ended up going back home and sitting on the sofa and not really doing anything. Sunday ended up being a really boring day. Hmm. So that was my example talking about my past weekend thinking about both positive and negative experiences. Now I wanna invite you to try. Talk about how your weekend was. If you wanna try once answering using your real information, then try a second time and force yourself to either be more positive or more negative, that might be nice practice. But as you're speaking, I want you to think about this question. Are the description words you're using the tone of your voice and your body language communicating that message that this was a positive or a negative experience. Try to make your whole communication from your vocabulary to your pronunciation to your presence all sending that same signal. So pause the video now and tell me about how was your weekend. Nice work. That was great hearing you practice speaking about describing the past in both positive and negative experiences. 
So for our last practice today, I want us to try and imagine using these description words in a real conversation. I want you to imagine that you're going to meet with a friend for an afternoon coffee, and you're going to sit and talk about how your day was. Tell them about everything, everything you can remember, the weather, your breakfast, your lunch, whatever you did. Maybe you went to school or to work. Maybe you had errands to do. So reflect on your day and try to be as descriptive as possible. Try to share with your friend your opinion, your thoughts, your personal self, right? Was it a positive day? Was it a negative day? How can you communicate that to your friend? Um, one thing that might help for this, um, if you don't have someone to actually practice with, is to take a pair of headphones and put them in and imagine that you're having a phone call with somebody. If you want to, you could go to an actual coffee shop, buy a coffee, and pretend to make a phone call. I'm going to tell you a secret. Nobody else in the coffee shop will know that no one's on the phone. Everyone's going to be looking at you and listening going, wow, they speak English. Who are they talking to? Ooh. Everyone will be curious, and I, I think that might be a nice way to put yourself in a situation to really practice. Um, you might imagine that you have a friend who lives far away and you're going to meet them for a virtual coffee. Um, and that might help you imagine what another person could be saying. Now, if you know somebody who speaks English, don't do this. That's silly. Instead, invite your friend for a coffee and tell them, hey, I'm working on my English and I want to practice. Can I invite you out for a coffee and we spend the whole time practicing speaking in English? Um, that would be my recommendation there. And you can still practice that same question of how was your day and whatever else comes up um, and practice using these descriptions in a real conversation. Well, I had a really wonderful day, to be honest. Um, the weather was, I wouldn't say beautiful, but it wasn't terrible. We had good weather. It's getting cooler, and I'm excited for that. We had a terrible summer. It was too hot and too long. And so when I have a day that's cooler and gray, for me right now, that feels like beautiful weather. Um, and I had a really exciting day. I got some good news for one of my friends who's working on a big project. Um, and so I got to take my friend out for lunch and celebrate. And we had a really delicious lunch celebrating. And it's been a really wonderful day. So that's my modeling of what I might say if you invited me out for coffee. And I wish you good luck in practicing having that conversation with a friend, real or imaginary, about how was your day. Good luck being descriptive, sharing your opinion, your perspective, and your personality with others. And good luck as you keep practicing English. Take care, everyone. Bye.